All of my life, I never known you to fail. You remain the same, man. Wonderful is your name. All of my life, I never known you to fail. You remain the same, man. Wonderful is your name. Go ahead and share. All of my life, I've never known you to fail. You remain the same, man. Wonderful is your name. All of my life, I've never known you to fail. You remain the same, man. Wonderful is your name. You woke me up this morning, started me on my way. La, 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 la. I don't know the rest of the words, but you know how all of us be doing. All we have to know, all we have to know, all we have to know. Have to know is the tune. If you've ever sang in a choir before, you know that's what they do. <laughs> they say if you forget the words, just keep the tune and add some more words. Don't sing loud though, so we don't know. We know that you don't know the words. All right, you you forgot some of them. It's okay. Just keep the tune. Just keep the tune. Pastor Ben, know what I'm talking about. Listen, I have been singing in choir since, oh gosh. Um, <clears throat> let me see. I sang in some choirs at 13 at a church. And then I don't know what in the world made me join a gospel choir at college, but I sang in the FSU, Florida State University, gospel choir for two years. Um, and then after that, I've just been, I've done choirs with ministries that I've been a part of. Collegiate choirs, adult choirs, praise and worship teams, um, some praise and worship leading because usually there was always someone else that was like the main leader. So, yeah, but we're going to have a talk today. Go to my Daring Dialogues page. It's, on, oh, it's live on Facebook. Please share that because I want this to be the first and last time I personally address this. So let's share. Let's share. Um, I call this broadcast tonight. This is Daring Dialogue. So welcome everyone who's with us for the first time. I'm your host, Shante Charles. Um, I call this broadcast Sunday West. <laughs> so I don't get flagged um, for my video to be taken down. But y'all know what I'm about to talk about. We're going to talk about the combination of those two things. Sunday and West. Sunday West. Yes. That rapper. <clears throat> Turn born again believer that people actually have the nerve to actually question his salvation when I'm looking at some of y'all sideways because y'all been saved for umpteen thousand hundred fifty eleven years and I don't see no fruit on your tree but you got nerve to question his salvation but okay so yeah let's 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 get into it let's get into it so I have taken the time out of my life, time I cannot get back, <laughs> to look at two, two, not one, two services facilitated by Mr. West. And they really weren't facilitated. I've also looked at some interviews of his wife um, actually going into detail and sharing what happened, all right? So if you have been talking about the Kanye West thing, share this broadcast because we're going to break down some things and hopefully you will come away from this with more understanding because the goal for me is always understanding it's always redemption it's always um to leave on a positive note all right so someone sent me a i think it was like a five minute clip at first of his worship at when he was in Chicago at um, Charles Jenkins Church. 
But then I went and searched further and I found the whole thing where he started from the beginning all the way to the end. And that was about, I think, 25 minutes long. So I watched that whole thing. Then this past Sunday, he was at uh, Pastor Bryant's church in uh, New Birth in Atlanta. And again, this is time I cannot get back. See my face, okay? <laughs> I watched the entire three hour plus minute service from beginning to end, just so I can make sure I didn't miss anything because I want to have some perspective on what he is doing, on what he is doing when he's invited to a ministry because both of these places invited him, what his wife had to say about how these, this whole thing began, and then I'm going to sort of walk you through some of those things. But before I saw any of this stuff, I'm going to tell you what the Lord told me. Because I tend, I don't know about anybody else. I can't speak for anybody else's walk with God. All right. When I start hearing a whole lot of chatter about a person and it just keeps being in the air or in the media or repetitive ch chatter, before I fix my lips to respond, take note, people, take note, <laughs> take note, leaders. Before I fix my lips to respond about something that I don't have information on, I don't have personal knowledge on, I don't have a context for, I actually go and pray about it. Yes, I still do that. I hope other leaders do that too. I went and prayed about it and I asked the Lord, what is going on? <laughs> Just like that. I said, God, what is, what is actually going on? I know what people are saying, even people that I respect highly, I know what they're saying, but I want to know what you are saying and what you think about what is, what is going on. Is this the devil? Is this a distraction? Is this the trick of the enemy? What in the tar nations is going on? So that's how me and God talk. Okay. Can't speak to your relationship. You might use these and thou's. I don't, I just say, God, what? What is this? What is this? So I was surprised because he said to me that Kanye was facilitating black joy. And I was like, okay, facilitating black joy. Give me more. Can you explain what that means? You know, it's like, okay, he's facilitating black joy. And he said, Kanye is doing something that has a long tradition with black culture. So he said, you need to go back and you need to look at your own history and understand that because of the time in which you live, black people are under similar conditions of oppression and, and suppression. And when that happened and when that was happening, <clears throat> there was something that your ancestors did. Now, people who are in certain movements in our country that are black no longer believe in that. They don't believe in doing what their ancestors did that actually worked. Let's put that there. So he's going back to a tradition of something that actually worked. Mm -hmm. This is something that his wife confirmed when she was, when they were interviewing her both on The View and I forget the other show they interviewed her on because she said it in two different interviews. She said for him, it started out as a method of healing himself. He had tried other things and we know he tried other things because it was clear. He was, he was put away in facilities a couple of times. People remember that. And he came out and he was looking all weird and everything. So he had tried other methods, but this was the method that began to heal him. Now, ain't that something? The saints obviously don't believe in healing anymore. So, 
it started as a method of healing himself. He would sing, he would write, he would play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, Lady Latoya. It started as healing. It started as soul work. It started as internal work that he was doing. Then it moved on to his friends and family found out what he was doing. And so he would do it in the presence and along with his friends and family. Kind of sounds like Acts, you know, like going from Jerusalem to the uttermost parts of the world. But I guess we don't believe that part about scripture either. Um, so <laughs> it started with him, moved to his family and his friends, and then his friends started inviting him. So he would go to cities where his friends were and he would do this music ministry. Now, when you got Kim Kardashian calling something music ministry, you just you got to do a double take. So they said it started out as, again, him healing himself. Family and friends got involved. And from there, it began to grow. So he began to, to open it up to more people. Under the suggestion of family and friends, it is going to be turned into the music that he's creating or has created out of his healing experience is going to be turned into a gospel album eventually. So it is going to become music that is sold. However, that's not what started it. All right. Three people have attested that Kanye West has confessed Christ, that he is a believer and that he is born again. Kanye West himself on the service that I saw got up and finally gave his own testimony. We will talk about that in a moment. So again, when God told me he was facilitating black joy, I left it alone, but more and more people began to talk about it. So I went back to the Lord and he was like, you really need to actually kind of dig into what does that mean? What does it mean to facilitate black joy? Here's one thing we know about suppression, all right? And in times past, when our ancestors were oppressed, they would begin to call upon the Lord. They would begin to cry out to God. They would begin to experience a spiritual release and a spiritual freedom. Praise and worship is one way of uniting people under the same mind, under the same sound, calling out to the same God. So I don't know if y'all don't understand that. I'm, I, I'm, you, you can maybe get off the broadcast at this point. So again, what is happening is there is a unifying sound taking place and they're calling on not just any God and not just any Lord. They are calling on the name of the Lord Jesus, the Christ. All right. So it's not something that's random. It's not something that is, um, how can I say it? Nondescript is a very specific message that he is giving. Now, do I agree with doing what they call masking, which is singing taking a secular song and singing over it. I don't believe in that. All right. But that again is not all that they're doing. <clears throat> Some of the songs, most of the songs were that I heard were original songs based on scripture. So again, I can only go by what the Lord told me. He said, Kanye is facilitating black joy in a time where black joy and black voices are being oppressed and suppressed. In a time when the atmosphere in our nation wants people to be oppressed and depressed and suppressed and crying and afflicted and fearful and wondering what's going to happen to them because of all the things that's happening in the world, here is someone who's stepping out of that and causing other people to step out of that and to step into a real joy in God. Now, you can choose to fight that if you want to. You go right ahead. 
I'm not going to fight that. So let's get down to this service. So Sunday, which was, I think, maybe the first time that it was filmed where he was actually um, singing and he was actually speaking, I'm going to go over a couple things that he said. He said, number one, <clears throat> that Jesus is the only one who saves. He said that. Nobody encouraged him to say it. Nobody, you know, whispered in his ear. He made that confession out of his mouth. He also said, let's get specific about who we're talking about. We're talking about Jesus. He said, Jesus died for his sins. He said he was born again. He also said the road to hell is paved with, um, with people saying, I'm just a good person. He also said he spent a lot of time chasing after things. He was chasing numbers. He was chasing statues. But he said that the power of God cannot be calculated. Then he started talking about fathers and fatherhood and how if there's no father in a home and you're in a neighborhood, you be the father. He said, if there's no fathers on, on the block and you're the father on the block, you speak up on that block. You speak up about what's happening. So from what I could see and what he declared out of his own mouth, I'm going to go with, I believe he is actually sincere. I believe he actually means what he says. Until I see something that says otherwise, I'm going to assume, based on what I saw and based on his own confession, that he is a new believer. Now, whether or not the church will treat him as such, that's to be, yeah. <sighs> we seem to only want to treat people who are believers unless we see them or unless they're our friends or unless we led them to Christ. Then all of a sudden their salvation is valid because we saw it and we led them to Christ. Very ironic. Okay. Um, couple of, a couple of other things I've noticed in this service. The first two hours of the service um, to put it kindly, the first two hours of the service, to put it kindly, I could have done without. You go back and watch the three hours and you tell me, you come back and tell me if I was wrong or not. But the first two hours, I was like, okay, that, that was institution. I've seen institution a lot. Lady Latoya, you saw it? She said yes. All right. The first two hours of the service sounded like an infomercial. It sounded like putting out of resumes of mega church pastors. Um, there was a teaching on tithe that was actually not biblical at all. <laughs> um, how are you going to tell people they no longer under the curse, but then say, but you're still obligated to give a tithe? I don't have time for it today. I, that's a whole other teaching. All right. Um, people were saying in the service that a revival was coming. And no, no, actually no, no revival is coming. An awakening is here. An awakening is here. What you saw or what you see happening with Kanye West is an awakening. That's not a revival. Please go and find out what, who has revivals. Zombies have revivals. We're not zombies. We're the body of Christ. We don't have revivals. We have awakenings. Okay. Um, so what I saw in the three hours was institution versus spiritual awakening. It was a clear distinction. It was like oil and water. The first two hours was like institution. And then the last hour was Let's bring on an awakening. But I also understand why they did that. I also understand why they had two hours of institution and then they brought spiritual awakening at the end. There's a, there's a reasoning, a purpose behind doing that. 
What I saw happening in the hour that he was there was I saw the ecclesia literally being snatched out of the clutches of the church. It was a, it was a wonderful thing. It was a great sight to behold. Um, there was a stark difference. If you watch the service at the beginning, there was praise and worship at the beginning. And if you fast forward to about two hours in, okay, there was uh, when the choir and everything began to sing, there was a stark difference between what the church was offering as praise and worship and what Kanye West was doing. It was a stark difference. And if you have the Holy Spirit, you will actually feel that difference. I was sharing with um, an apostle. I was literally weeping last night because I was weeping at the stark difference between what the church is offering and literally what they were singing. When they were singing, it was like, this is what heaven is doing now. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. Um, and so when people say, well, I have issues with Kanye. Here's my thing. I don't listen to Kanye West's music. I've never been a fan of Kanye West. I don't really listen to a whole lot of secular music. So my interpretation of him is based on what I see right now. And as I was watching what was happening, I kept thinking to myself that he is uniquely gifted and uniquely qualified to lead a generation before they get entangled. Like one of the ironic things that I, that I saw between the institution, the first two hours and what he was bringing was the fact that the people who were in the institution preaching a sermon for an hour, all right, they were actually kind of marketing Jesus as if you do these things or if you give this, you'll get money. Like that was the whole hour of a quote unquote sermon was about getting money and about how they didn't have money and now they do. And how look at these, look at these mega people who gave this money and now they have more money. I don't need an hour of that. Maybe some people do. I don't need that in order to give to God. So I thought it was ironic that in Kanye's hour, he would basically get up there and actually overturn that doctrine to say, I have it all. I have it all. My family is a billion dollar family. But none of that trumps Jesus. That was his message. I just want you to marinate on that. Just marinate, just marinate on it. He was literally coming with an exact opposite message of the message that was given by the institution, which is give and you'll have more. He was saying, I had it all and none of that matters without Jesus. But Kanye is the one who's the trick of the enemy. <laughs> Yeah, let me keep going. <clears throat> the other thing that I saw was that what he was doing will actually grow to be bigger than an institution can hold. And I think as Apostle uh, Green, who was on, on here, said, I would prefer he actually keep it outside of the institution. I'm going to have to agree with her on that. Um because what we've seen happen is when something comes or when people from the institution invite you in and you begin to facilitate, in this case, black joy, and it gets to a point where people sometimes invite you in just to observe you, just to see how they can suppress or how they can undermine or how they can sabotage what you're doing. And so what I saw was, this is something that cannot be controlled by institution. And if we know anything about church history and we know anything about history, period, too much influence that cannot be controlled by the religious will ultimately be undermined by the religious. 
See, if, 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 if the religious cannot control it and they cannot put a dollar sign on it and they cannot put their title or their name on it, eventually they will try to undermine it. We can, we can almost guarantee this. Um, and so when I, when I realized that I started actually praying for him because he may be very sincere. All right. He may be very sincere in trying to come out of the whoredoms of the world, but somebody needs to actually pray for him because there's something called the whoredoms of the church. So just because you're out, you're out of one frying pan, you might find yourself in, in, in another frying pan. That's what I'm saying. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yes, that is actually what I'm saying. Um, the other piece was you saw that certain people, you could kind of see certain people were like, where is he going with this? Like, it's almost like people were waiting for a punchline. Like, okay, now that we've worshiped, there must be something else. Like there must be a gotcha moment coming after this. People were, you could see it in people's face that they were still trying to figure out what was going on. When the only thing that was going on was the only thing that God is really hungry for, which is actually you and your worship. So I saw, I noticed that religious people must be led by something they can see. Because people keep saying Kanye is leading, but he's actually really not. If you actually go look at the services, there's a choir director who's doing the directing and the people are singing. And on this last video, because the first one he didn't sing at all, on the last one, Kanye began to sing, sing a little bit toward the end. But this was after almost an hour. And it really led into his, um, his testimony. So my conclusion, you have a musical genius by most people's accounts who is leading a culture that has been strongly anti-Christ. He's now trying to lead a culture of people back to serving Christ. And the church is mad, which makes me wonder whose, part, whose church are you? One of the last songs that he taught, he began to teach a song that he wrote called Haya, based on the church mothers who would shout Haya in a service. Then he began to go into the Hebrew meaning of the word Haya, because it's actually a Hebrew word. And then he had a whole song based on the Hebrew word Haya. So he was literally <clears throat> showing people how the word applies, getting them to sing the word in unity. But he's the distraction from the enemy. He that winneth souls is wise. And he that snatches souls out of the jaws of religion is on another level. So I say, bravo, Mr. West, bravo. Lastly, a couple of years ago, in 2012, April of 2012, I put out an article based on what God told me that he was going to be doing with this thing called the church. Even before I really understood the difference between the church and the ecclesia. He said that he was resetting his stones. Stones being lively stones, being the people of God. He said that the setting, which was the church, the setting that the people were in, which were the, which were the stones, all right? He said that the stones were good, but the setting was not. And he said that the setting, which represents an institution, he said the setting was going to crumble and the stones would fall out. They would come out 
but the stones were still good and he was going to take his stones and set them into a new setting. And he said he was going to start with worship. He was going to start with music, that it was going to be music where he began to do this work. Now, say what you want to say. I believe that there will be more Kanye's <laughs> before it's all over. And I, will, and I believe that there will be more exposure of the stark difference between what God is trying to raise up out of his people versus what we've been doing. I believe that there's going to be, it's going to be like day and night and you're going to actually be able to see it very clearly. You're also going to be able to see very clearly who is willing to prostitute a move of God versus who is willing to posture themselves to get in the move of God. Because it's not going to be about any one person. I believe that was one of the most important things I saw in both of those instances. It really was not about a person. God may have moved on him, but he has actually moved on and he's moving on his body. And so what you saw, okay, what you saw in that was you saw body ministry, what we, what the, what the church that we all claim we want to be like the one in acts, we saw body ministry happening. Even when there were people singing individually, you couldn't tell who was singing. I just need some of y'all to go watch it. Go watch the last two of them. And what I will do, um, if you're on my Facebook I will link the last two services down in the comments so you can actually go and see for yourself. But again, before I went to go see it, the Lord told me that he was in the midst of what Kanye was doing and that he was facilitating black joy through what Kanye was doing. Then I need some of you all to go and Watch some of the film, watch some of the footage, which I, which I believe you can find on YouTube of your ancestors who would march and pray and sing. They would have, they would come together and they would assemble and they would sing what was called freedom songs. They would sing freedom songs before they would go out and march before the children would go out and be hosed down and attacked by dogs. They weren't just going on their own strength. So a couple of things I wanted you all to think about on tonight. This probably took up all of my time. Oh no, it didn't. 33 minutes. Praise God. Hallelujah. So I have been motivated this Monday to get my happy self up and sing unto the Lord and sing and sing some more. I have been motivated to um, keep singing the word of the Lord. I have been motivated to help facilitate black joy amongst my brethren and my sisterins. And again, for those of you all who are saying that Kanye is not saved, for those of you all who are saying that you, you don't believe it, somebody at some point didn't believe you either. Let me just put that out there. Okay. Somebody at some point didn't believe you were saved either. Somebody at some point saw your raggedy lifestyle from the past and you said that you were saved and somebody said, honey, I believe it when I see it. <laughs> I had several relatives who could get on these broadcasts right now and say, I had to see Shantae walk out some things before I was willing to believe that Shantae was saved because my lifestyle was definitely not speaking Christ. Okay. So it's okay to have doubts about whether or not he is a believer. I believe one Bishop came on, um, 
I think that Saturday or Friday of last week and said, well, if he's saved, then he needs to give a public confession. Well, guess what? Go watch Sunday's video and you will see him give a public, very public confession along with his testimony. So now he's done that. What more can he do except keep walking in the direction of Christ like hopefully all of us who claim to know him are supposed to be doing? Let's not forget some of us have been saved 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years and we ain't asked nobody to join us in a song. See, y'all don't want to start with me today. I got time. I got time tonight. <laughs> You've been saved for 35 years. You ain't got a song from the Lord yet. You've been saved for 10 years. You haven't invited anybody to sing along with you. You haven't invited anybody to pray. You haven't told anybody about the joy down in your soul. Your co-workers don't even know that you saved because you're so mean. And they would be like, oh, when you got saved last week? So, listen. <laughs> we love to have grace when it comes to ourselves. But boy, we are sure stingy when it comes to somebody else's grace. <laughs> oh my goodness. We stingy. Child, we don't want to give grace to nobody but ourselves and our very best friends, our faux friends and nobody else. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to just say, if you go watch that service in the first two hours is exhausting, just hold on to the third hour or just fast forward to past hour number two and just let the, let, let the spirit of God come and lift you up. Now, if a man's testimony isn't good enough, if, if the fruit of his change is as it's developing, isn't good enough, then I don't know what to tell some of the saints because by some of y'all accounts, when I first gave my life to Christ, I wouldn't have been saved by some of y'all accounts. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that Jesus believed me. I'm glad that he accepted my confession. I'm glad that he's still speaking. Because the saints, my, my. Anyway, this has been another episode of Daring Dialogues, and I've been your host, Shante Charles. I hope that I have said something to get you thinking. And for those who are going to holler, she ain't used not one scripture. I got a scripture for you, all right. I'm going to close my Facebook chat on this. And then we're going to go and dialogue on Periscope. I know Pastor Ben is ready. <laughs> Let's go to Acts chapter 5. This is what I got to say about all of y'all. Who got something to say about what God said about Kanye. When God tell me something about somebody. I'm going to go with God. And then I'm going to let y'all figure the rest of it out. Okay. Again. What did the Lord tell me when I asked him? He said Kanye is facilitating black joy in the earth. Leave him alone. Period. <laughs> Acts 5 and 8. Acts 5, excuse me, and 38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. Everything that's of man will burn up if Christ ain't behind it. But if it be of God, verse 39, but if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. You can try, but you can't overthrow it. Lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. Now, if your hands are as long as God's and you want to box with God about what Kanye is doing, you go right ahead. I'm not giving you boxing gloves, though. I'm going to stay over here in the corner, me and God. And when the bell rings, ding, ding, and you want to go fight God on this, have at it. But as for me and my house, 
we gonna um help facilitate black joy and anybody else that's doing that and wants to do it we gonna say have your way holy spirit go ahead here's what i know about the spirit of truth there's no way that you can be in search of truth and get lost God is not in the business of letting people search for truth and get lost. Now, if you go looking for celebrity, you go looking for cash money, <laughs> you go looking for prosperity, you go looking to be seen, you go, be, go looking for a title, you just might get lost. But if you go looking for the truth, God is not going to allow you to get lost. Period. Anyway. This has been another episode of Daring Dialogues. I've been your host, Shantae Charles. Remember, light is the most daring opposition to all darkness. Take care. And if you want to chat it up with us, you can meet us over on Periscope. I will come back Facebook later um, this evening and I will drop some links below so you can go and watch for yourself and let God speak to you about what Kanye is doing. Take care and see if this will let me put it up here. Join the conversation.